So for today's episode of Pathmark Presents, I have a very interesting guest and um, actually coming from a very interesting industry. So we're going to be having um, a quite unique look actually in, um, in today's episode. So I'm here with Mike Corbett, who is the co-founder of Maxatter. And essentially what Maxatter is doing, it's um, you know doing bespoke robotic process automation and machine learning for the financial markets and i don't want to take away too much who's actually benefiting from these technologies and those services so uh, that's why i have we have you know mike on the show and also to learn you know how to grow this type of business um, digitally so mike welcome to the show thanks very much lucas thanks for inviting me along very cool so maybe give us an overview about maxatter in your own words like what is it all about sure um so maxatter is a, a as you mentioned a financial technology company um there's four founders in total. Three of us worked in financial markets for the, I think we've got a combined experience of around 100 years, which is aging us slightly now. Um, so what we do is we bring our software, it relies on a robotic process automation, or RPA, uh, with elements of machine learning as well. And effectively what we do is uh, at a base level, the RPA uh, takes care of all repetitive manual tasks that are being done in financial markets over and over again. Uh, and then through uh, more advanced RPA and then machine learning, uh, we then move the systems not just to operating the way they should operate, but actually improving and, and adding something to the client uh, uh, um, systems and everything else. So uh, effectively what we aim to do is we try and reduce the bottom, uh, bottom end costs and improve the top end profits is, is effectively what we're doing with cutting edge technology. Very cool. That is a very succinct summary. So could you tell me who would be actually benefiting? Like who, you know, who is knocking on the door and trying to get help from you guys? So, I mean, the technology itself, uh, RPA is, is uh, machine learning is, is now becoming more common in, in life generally, you know, self-driving cars, uh, even Alexa, things like this. Um, so Maxeter itself is focusing on just financial markets, because again, that's our background. Um, generally speaking, we're looking at front office, so trading and sales traditionally, but where banking has moved across now, front office now includes risk, compliance, supervision, and things like this. So effectively, really, the, the, the software could work for anybody in financial markets, uh, a bank, broker, hedge fund, uh, a prime broker, anything, anything, anyone that uses uh, 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 systems for financial uh, uh, motivation, financial uh, services. So it, it's, it would work for a small two-man firm, three-man mm -hmm. hedge fund of some sort, right mm -hmm. up to you know, a, a tier one bank. Um, it, it, it's a case of it would fit around whatever the client has. So rather than trying to build a system that works for everyone, we build around what the client need is. Um, so uh, effectively, it would work for anyone in this industry. Very interesting. That gives definitely sort of an understanding um, who can be benefiting from your services. What I would be curious, though, is um, given that sort of range of customers that you were describing, what would be the typical journey that somebody goes through in order to, you know, get to know about you guys? Like, what would be the client acquisition channels for that matter? Um, how do they hear and get started with Maxetta? So at the moment, and, and, and where we are, we're still right at the start. Um, uh, so our approach now will be different to our approach going further down the road. So at the moment, because again, we have a lot of experience in financial markets, we obviously have a lot of contacts that we've built up over those years. So at the moment, we're uh, word of mouth, if you like. Uh, we're going to people we know, contacts we know already, um, and we are uh, dealing with these people, and we're now beta testing with four or five firms now as a result. Now, obviously, this we can't maintain this going forward in terms of expansion. Eventually, we will run out of contact. So we will then need to branch into social media using, uh, you know, even Pathmonk for, for the website and everything else. Um, and, 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 you know, in, in expand the sales team and everything else. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a, a, at the start of the journey for the sales and we'll have to grow it out. So we're doing it the way we're doing it now because we need to do it this way. Um, and then once further down the line, we would, of course, expand. And uh, as we grow, we can then reach out to more and more customers. That makes, makes a whole lot of sense. I would be curious, though, you mentioned the website briefly there. What role would you attribute at the moment to the website? Well, for right now, because of the way we're doing it, uh, um, and I think also financial markets in general, my view is that it, it's rare for somebody to go, oh, I need this RPA system or this, and look, go online and search. Because, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a bank or a financial institution, you're going to be inundated with people phoning you up. So realistically, you don't need to go and chase it. So the website, we have a website. Uh, it wouldn't be, especially at the moment, it wouldn't be the primary uh, 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 lead generation, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. But going forward, where it would be useful is where people, where we 
interacting with people where we don't have already uh, 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 contacts with them. Uh, and then we can see who's going onto the website, what they're looking at, you know, how long they're on it, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we can build from there because ultimately what you want to do is go to a client with an idea already, rather than having to ask them, you know, a hundred questions. If you can nail that down to 15 questions, because you've already seen what they're looking at, and what they're interested in. And because of our background in financial markets, we can work backwards and go, okay, they need X, Y, Z. They need a risk piece or they need a trading piece or you know, whatever else they are. Makes sense. Coming back to your services, right? Or your, um, that you're offering for everybody who's listening in, what would you say is sort of the main competitive advantage that somebody's getting when they're going with you guys? Uh, there, there, there's quite a few. I mean, obviously I would say that. So I, I think to start with at a very basic level, um, and again, if I use my own experience of this, um, uh, when I was, uh, I was 15 or 16 years trading, um, and I saw the same problem at three different banks I worked at, and essentially uh, you were losing time doing things outside of your job. So to give you an example, uh, I used to trade uh, equity baskets. And the basket would come in and I do the trade. And my trading was very simple and very straightforward. So the, the, the actual risk and execution of the trade was about 10 minutes. But it was costing me 50 minutes to do the background checks, the credit checks, to make sure there was nothing on the, the restricted list because we had three or four or five different systems, legacy mm -hmm. systems and everything else all kind of mashed together. And none of them really worked properly. And it was very uh, time intensive. So at a very base level, RPA can come in and remove uh, a, a lot of these processes from you know, wasting uh, somebody's time having to do it. So my job, I was getting paid to trade, yet I was wasting, spending more time doing admin. So at a very base level, it would remove all the admin and free up time. So in theory, you could, as a trader, you could do more trades or, or whatever else. But moving on from that, and, that, and that's just the, uh, at the very baseline, and that's necessary um, uh, uh, for banking going forward. I think that's the banking industry is starting to accept that it needs to clean up the, the, the admin and everything else. There's too many errors get made on basic things get, that get missed, and these things can lead to big problems, fines and everything else. So, but going on from there, once that's been eliminated, uh, we can move on to more advanced RPA and even to the point of machine learning, where if we take an example of, uh, for example, a corporate action bot that we're building. Now, uh, essentially the bot will start to operate almost like a trader to an extent. What it will do, it will pick out the news that's been uh, um, released about the corporate action. It will check your portfolio of positions, what you've got, what you need to do, how you need to do it maybe historical p &L based on what happened the year before or everything else. So what it does, it essentially takes the data that you've got or the bank has already. So in this case, the portfolio that they have, or if you're a salesperson, maybe your clients that you've traded with recently that they've got you know, positions in this particular stock and delivers the information or the data that you've already got inside your systems, but presents it in a way that's actually usable and it gives you, uh, uh, you know, direction. So it becomes, rather than, than just a data hub, it becomes an intelligence hub. It then tells you, this is the way, this is what you need to do. This is how you trade the PL. This is where you get to. This is the execution. So you can see, I mean, that, that's a, a far up further end of the scale. But mm. from that point, even a basic RPA system would be an, an immediate day one improvement on what's currently sitting in most financial institutions. Um, so that's so really that can be, and that, that can be pinned towards, you know, risk or compliance or anything else. Anything else that's very labor intensive, that can be dealt with and then moved on to. You know, helping them find. So, if you're looking at compliance, looking at you know maybe tracking you know uh, front running trades or or you're tracking restricted lists or whatever else it is. So again, it reduces the amount of time that that firms are paying people to do things outside of their role, having but having to still do these things that are crucial to make sure the bank still ticks over. Very good. Super, super interesting. That definitely gives a picture on, on why it's actually, you know, very needed to, to get in contact with you, with you guys. I would be curious to switch gears a little bit. We talked a lot about the product. We talked, you know, how you're thinking about growth as well, obviously, you know, the stages of growth that you're in right now. I would be curious about yourself. Like, um, what does a, a typical, maybe if you could even say that, like, how does a typical day like of yours? Like, you know, you're starting in the morning and like, is there, you know, are you, are you working in blocks? Are you focusing on particular areas? Like, how should we imagine uh, Mike going from the morning through in the evening? Yeah, uh, obviously it's changed slightly with, with lockdown and COVID and everything else. Um, so there's a lot more video calls, uh, of course. Um, but realistically, the way we're split, split out, uh, each of the founders has a particular skill set or something they're into. So, for example, Damien, one of the founders, was CIO, uh, a large European bank for 20 years. So he deals with nuts and bolts, physically how the system. So we have the greatest system in the world. If we can't plug it in and we can't get it to work with what's already there with the, the existing legacy systems, it, it's irrelevant. It's no good. So Damien plots, tracks that, 
works with our dev team. AJ uh, is more for the ideas and, um, and, and kind of the direction and how we can tweak things and adjust things. And, and largely my role is, is more sales and, and, and information gathering. So we spent the last couple of years going around and effectively polling uh, uh, clients and customers what are they looking for? What do they want? What do they need? So to make sure that we use this technology that's phenomenal and pointed it in the right direction. So rather than just mm -hmm. going, right, we're just going to build one type of system. So we're going to be the trading uh, mm -hmm. system. We're going to be the compliance system. That, that, would, that would be underselling the, the, the software and its capability. So we found that actually, if we could build something in such a way that we could re reduce the amount of time that's spent on builds when a client comes to us and says, oh, can you build a, system? Oh, it's a two year build or a six month build? Well, that's no good. So we've got it to a point where we built a, a really uh, uh, impressive RPA engine. That means that our builds are now much, much faster and the mm -hmm. client to the point the client will be able to build themselves. So a lot of what I do now is obviously speaking to, 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 to our contacts of clients, getting them interested in that kind of thing, uh, dealing with the ones that we're already beta testing with as well and seeing what ideas I've got, where they can get to. And because of my experience uh, in the front office, then actually going, okay, maybe this is a way to look at it or that's the way to, or I've spoken to this guy on the debt side He's got similar issues to the guy that's trading equities and we can mix the two up. So it's 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 difficult. So there's no, uh, un unlike when I was in banking, there was a structure to the day that's very clear, whereas this is a bit more, uh, you know, the day starts and then you have to kind of make up what you're going to do and where you're going to go. And generally, you try to follow the clients, if you like, see what they're doing, what they're up to um, uh, and what issues they're having. And ideally, if you can catch them when they're having a bad tech day, that's ideal. Or, or, yeah. or an admin heavy day that side because it makes it easier for them to go and this is the, this is the problem and, and that's an issue and I think that's where I come in over uh, uh, Damien and, and AJ who are both far more technical than I am is that translating what a client might say and going back and saying this is the issue they're complaining about what can we do to fix it can we do can we build the bot to do xyz and then uh, and that's how it goes so it's really a mixture chasing down leads to an extent uh, 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 and again it, it's a real it's sitting on webinars trying to keep up with the latest information that's going on it's it, it's it's it can be either a really long day or it can be quite a short day it's just it, it's very varied yeah i was actually about to ask like you know somebody like yourself faces obviously a lot of new challenges from all the different yeah. pieces and plates that you're balancing. like what's your go-to place like how do you learn about you know how to solve a next new problem like what is your go-to to run well, well this is the thing so so uh, as, you, as we kind of as I've touched on as well, my background isn't in technology in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but what I could see uh, was that this technology is coming, and it's going to improve things. So it was enough for me to go, "This is a change I'm prepared to make." And as you say, I was coming in cold, effectively. Um, so uh, it, it was quite tricky. But again, deciding on the problems, it's a case of sitting down with the other partners and working, brainstorming, if you like, because we. Uh, four of us all come from different directions mm. it kind of works that you know if there's a floor or a hole or something's not being spotted somebody will pick it up we've of course got a whole raft of you know contacts people we've worked with just to bounce ideas off and everything else so it's it, it, it's been a learning process for me more than I think that the other founders purely because in a tech firm the you know, bulk of the knowledge is the technology my knowledge on technology is you know mm -hmm. front office trading style so it's 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 had its challenges but in in quite an, an entertaining way in quite a good way uh okay. I, I'm, I'm surprised that i've quite enjoyed it i got to the point where i was getting old enough that i thought this is you know this is work is just work but actually i i quite you know i'm not saying i'm I skip and whistle into work but it, it it's very it's fascinating stuff um uh, for, even for somebody like a, a layman like me so it's yep there are some challenges and everything else and again it's and some of the challenges can be explaining to the clients the potential for the software itself. Um, it, you know, it's like anything you say, I can build you anything you want. Uh, they, you're, you're relying on the customer having some imagination about what do. Whereas if you can go here, are, here's what we built before. Here's what can be useful. In my experience, this is what I would have used it for. And that's, and that's what it is. So you need to kind of drive the conversation slightly. So, and again, limited sales uh, experience on my side. So it's, it's, it has been slight, a, a learning process, but I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I have. Very, very cool. So since we're slowly coming to an end of the interview, I want to jump into our rapid fire questions. Are you ready for those? <laughs> we'll see. What's the last book that you read? Uh, I'm reading uh, the last one I read. I can't remember the name. It's the, the Nike founder, his book. It's excellent, mm -hmm. by the way. Not mm -hmm. good enough to remember the title, obviously, but it was very good. <laughs> um, so I would recommend what's, it. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? 
Uh, good question. We've got a couple of things, I guess. Well, I, I, you know, I guess actually now uh, getting traction, expanding out, I guess, is what we're really focused on. There are a lot of things, but this, that would be the main, the main thing, I guess. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you want to have fixed for the company? That's a good question. Well, interesting, because we are a technology company, our boundaries aren't the technology. That's not really the problem. Uh, yeah, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. any, any technology problems I've had have been answered. So, yeah, pass. Okay. Very cool. And the very last question, uh, if today would be your very first day working on Maxeta, what would be the one advice you would give yourself? Uh, interestingly, it was some advice somebody gave me on my first day and, and gave all of us and we didn't listen. Whatever time frame you think you need as a startup, it's wrong. If you think you need three years, you're wrong. So it, these things, so whilst we are, our experience in banking is, you know, very impressive. Uh, our experience in technology is more impressive, but actually learning about setting up your own company, dealing with everything that comes with that and everything else, everything outside, outside those two things was a learning process. So that would be a just, you're not ready just to go out and start knocking on doors and, and seeing it, it, it takes some time. I think also to focus on one or two things first, rather than trying to do everything at, at once. So we, uh, and like I said, we, we were told and we still ignored it anyway. So that was teaches. <laughs> Very good to so everybody who's listening. You should listen to it twice. The first time you're not going to believe it. Second time you're going to believe it. Very good. Okay. I really appreciate it, Mike, that you took time with us today on the Pathfinder Presents podcast. Um, I want to give you the very last word. What's the one thing that somebody should remember about Mixata if they forget everything else of the interview? Uh, we're unique insofar as we've got cutting edge technology with some very impressive people on board and also experience, ex a lot of experience in banking. So the problems that you may have with software companies having to try and explain to them what you need and also explain to them how banking works we sidestep a lot of that we already understand we already know and the technology is in of itself absolutely phenomenal it is definitely the direction that not just banking but all industries are going in it's definitely coming and of course ours is the best very cool thanks a lot for being part of pathmark presents thanks very much lucas